Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kelly Levine, Closet Coach. I help professional organizers and designers design custom closets, grow their business, and make more money. And a lot of homeowners love this channel too because you get inside information that you're not going to find anywhere else. I always say that closet design is uh, one of the seven wonders of the world as far as trying to get some real information about it online. So that's what I'm here for. I don't know if you've, if this is your first time here, um, in order for a lot of this to make sense, I suggest going back to the playlist called Start Here and watching videos one, two, three, and four. I'm not going to lie, they're a little bit rough, but they give you the background as to how I'm talking about things here. Also, I got this really cool interface from my hubby for Christmas, so I'm hoping that the audio is a ton better on this video. So one, one baby step at a time, right? All right, so I have something fun for you today. I wanna to do a comparison because I have a past client who went to visit her sister in another state and they were gonna have a closet company come out and do a design for her sister's fairly large, nice closet. And once they saw the design, my client was like, uh, I don't know about this. And so she contacted me and I said, sure, send it on over. So she sent over the design, it was not good, and I redesigned it for them. So I wanna just say a couple things. There are a ton of great designers out there, and I mean really, really good designers. And depending on the company that they work for, some um, closet companies in some bigger cities have the capabilities to do unbelievable closets um, and the designers are fabulous. There are also a lot of designers out there who are really inexperienced and or, and I think this is the biggest problem, they have the mindset that they need to go out and they need to design something for their client that is the least expensive thing that they can so that their client will buy it. And therein lies the problem, um, because as a designer for over six years and $4 million of closets, I can tell you that people want what they want. People are willing to pay for what they want, but designers that go in with this mindset that they've got to create these inexpensive designs are cheating their customers because they're not listening. They're not putting in things that they need. And you'll, you'll see that in that in this example today. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys, as always, and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm not going to mention the name of the, uh, the company. Um, they're, they're a national company, though. Um, and so um, you would think that this would be a company that would send out a very good designer. So this is the one picture that I had to go on. I also knew that there were, you know, one little set of wire shelves over, oops, I'm going to do it this way, that there was one little set of wire shelves over here. And I also knew that there was some hanging over on this side. Okay. I think I had another picture, but I can't find it. But it, regard, irregardless, this is the picture that I had when, um, when my client sent me this design from the closet company that came out and this picture. Okay. So I could tell right away that I hated this design. There are a couple of huge red flags here. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this elevation here would be right here. It would be the very back of the closet back here. And they've got written down 42 inch wide drawers. You guys, that is not a thing. The company that I worked for, the maximum drawer width was 36. And even that was considered fairly large. We really tried to keep it to 32. There's so many problems with that, but I just want to get across a couple. Number one, if it's made from melamine, which probably this is, it's going to be extremely heavy. Number two, what you end up above with above that is a, is a shelf that's 42 inches long, which is going to bow, by the way. It's, it's too long to have any kind of weight on it for any kind of um, 
time. And um, it's just too big. Um, Like I said, um, if you think about a stack of clothes, most, most stacks of clothes are from 10 to 12 inches wide. So that means you get, you know, if you've got 10 inch, you get four stacks of clothes here. We all know what happens with four stacks of clothes. It looks just like this, okay? This is not what you want if you're paying for a custom closet. So, you know, besides being way too heavy, way too wide, creating shelves above that are, you know, way too big, um, it just, I don't even believe, um, I, I don't know if this company could actually produce that. I, you know, my only thought would be this is a very inexperienced designer um, because it's just terrible design. So a couple other things. She's given um, the client one, two, three, four, five shelves in an 84 inch high space. That means that these shelves are over 12 inches apart. Average, okay. That is supposed to be the shoe shelves. Shoe shelves only need to be six or seven inches apart. So essentially this designer has cheated this, this client out of a space that should have had like 10 to 11 shelves in it and given her five. Okay, this is not doing the client any good. It is it's not doing anybody any good. Um, and 40 inches wide again is, you know, maybe five pairs of shoes wide. So five times six is 30 pairs of shoes and tons of wasted space. Okay, and then we've got these um, long um, double hang sections, which are 40 inches, which is very close to the maximum. I think I've told you guys the maximum that we could do as a professional closet company or did do uh, based on experience is 42 inches. So these are, again, kind of spread out to the max. And my guess is that this designer did this so that she could get as few as possible sections there to keep the cost down. And then on this wall, she's done, and this would be the back, I'm sorry, this would be the side wall here. So those shoe shelves were here, all that double hanging was here. And then this, she has got three sections and the rod is at 72 inches. The only type of dress that ever needs to be at 72 inches is typically a wedding dress, a, you know, a really nice ball gown dress for someone who's fairly tall. Uh, there's, there's not very many different kinds. And you can see from this inventory, this person doesn't have anything that's 72 inches long. So again, the reason that this designer would put three sections with these rods way up here at 72 inches. Um, it makes no sense. Okay, it's just lazy designing. She, she didn't probably take an inventory. She didn't measure out how much mid this person has. I know there was a bunch more mid on this wall um, and some long, but almost all of this is double hung, okay? So those are just, you know, and here's another issue with this closet. This closet is 118 inches tall. There's 118 inches of ceiling height here. You can see in the picture all of this wasted space up here. Okay, so um, this designer designed this closet 84 inches tall. Most closet companies can go higher than that. Most closet companies can do 96 inches. I know in my area, this particular company can go higher than 84 inches. Now, some companies don't wanna do that because it's more work, it's heavier panels, it's more shelves, it does add a little bit of cost, but if you've got 108, 
18 inches of height and you're only using 84 inches, you've, you've just eliminated a ton of shelving. So a ton of storage, which most people need and want. Okay. So here's what I did. Okay. I've got, and here's the same layout. So I think I've mentioned this before in other videos, but in a long closet like this, when there's not room back here to do, um, you know, drawers in the right way. And by the way, in talking to my client, her sister wanted more drawers. Because when the client's looking at that, she's thinking four drawers or, you know, four drawers is all she's getting. They're 42 inches wide. So that's a huge amount of space, but it makes a lot more sense if you want to separate your stuff to do more drawers. She wanted more room for shoes because there was, I'll, I'll show you when we do the closet math, there was very little room for um, shoes and folded clothes in there. And we also and she also wanted a laundry. Now, my client knows about these laundry systems because she has one in her closet that I designed for her here. But I'm very surprised that this other closet company who should have access to all of these accessories didn't recommend or put in a laundry system because my client wanted one. Okay, so that's another thing. She wanted laundry. And she definitely wanted room for more shoes. So those are just a couple small details that tell me that that designer didn't ask any questions or didn't listen, okay? So here we go. Um, in doing the, the math, um, you know, I decided to use the back wall, whoops, the back wall for the double hanging which is really nice to do because again, this is a door that comes in like this. So in reality, this is your focal point, not this. And you can get, you know, a lot of double hanging back here. So that is what I did. I've got three, you know, six sections of 30 some inches. Plus I went up 96 inches. So she's got another shelf above here. And of course she can still use the top. So it's not just, you know, a single double hang like the other, the other person did. So, you know, in mine, I would have another shelf up here. Okay, so that's our back wall. Then the focal point wall, which is A here, I've got the laundry here which is a nice big pull out laundry. I'll try to find a picture and show you guys that. And then I've got the correct spacing of shoe shelves. Now these are adjustable if you use a custom closet company. So she can adjust if she's got some that are a little bit higher and some that are flats. Okay, but for the most part, this is gonna be the right amount of spacing and the correct spacing to get the most amount of shoes in that space. Then I've got double drawers, double banks of drawers with four in each one right here. And then shelves for folded clothes above. And I did go with pretty big drawers. And so these shelves, if she folds in tens, she'll get three stacks. If she wants to have a little bit more space, she can put two. Some people fold 12 inches wide. Um, but there's also purses and things like that. And then we've got a mid hanging here. In looking at the picture, most of this stuff here and some of the things here, these are mid hanging dresses. These are not dresses that take 63 inches and certainly not 72 inches. So I've set that first section there uh, that rod at 51 inches, which is a typical um, rod height for uh, most people's mid dresses. But again, you know, in talking with her contractor, we could move this up a little bit if that measurement needed to be up. And then she's got, you know, some nice shelves here as well. 
where she can fit three stacks across. Okay. Then on this wall, we've got more mid hanging because again, she doesn't have hardly any long hanging. And again, this could be risen up if she needed it to be. Okay, so we've got another 30 inches of mid and 30 inches of long with some nice shelving above that. Okay. So you can see this design looks a lot different, um, but what really is going to set it apart is when we look at the closet math. So I've written some, some uh, things out here for you guys to see. This is our inventory as best as we can do. So the hanging in the original closet, she had 270 inches, okay? That's how much she had hanging there. She only had space for about eight shelves and I'll show you how I counted that. I knew there was four shelves over here. They were wire, they do that all the time. There might've been five, so maybe this is 10. Oops. Ten, you know, spaces. There wasn't anything designated for shoes and there weren't any drawers in the original closet. So this is what the other company did. They did an overall 330 inches of hanging, which is 60 inches more than she had before, which is a lot more than she needed. Because if you look at this, this is not even full. Okay, this is very sparse. So when I added 270 inches, I added all of this, all of this, and all of the side. So she really, in reality, didn't even have that much hanging. So 270 inches would have been, you know, my goal probably. 330 is way over the mark. Plus the sections are super long, so they can't easily be converted into shelving because again, 40 inch wide shelving is too long. Uh, but she's got 240 inches of uh, short hanging and 90 inches of that super high long hanging, which again, nobody would need and this person certainly doesn't. She's only got basically nine spaces of shelving in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because this is supposed to be for shoes. That's how I counted it. Okay, so it's 30 pair of shoes and four drawers. Now, there is a lot that you can put in this closet, but watch what happens when you really are thinking things through. Okay, so in my design, I've done some of this math. I've got 280, I'm just gonna copy this. I've got 289 inches worth of hanging, 190 worth of short, 69 of mid, this section, in this section, and then 30 inches of long hanging for a total of 289 inches. So if we go back here, uh, let's see, it was uh, 59, 30, and 30. it's 190. So if we go back, you know, and look at this, I'm still 20 inches over the, over the, what, you know, what she supposedly had. So I have not shorted her anything as far as hanging. I've given her a little bit less um, short hanging, but way more than she needs. I've given her 59 inches of mid and 30 inches of long. So I've still basically given her 90 inches but I broke it up differently so that there could be a lot more shelving and I wanna show you how this works. So I'm gonna count the 30 inches. I'm gonna just count them as two spaces, okay? But we've, so we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20. I'm not gonna count this. I'm gonna leave that as a landing. 
22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, and then these as three, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48 spaces. Um, depending on the size of her shoes, I had enough room for 30 to 36 pairs of shoes right here. And she could definitely use other shelves for shoes as well. And, um, and then I've also given her eight drawers, two landings. And I'm going to show you guys an, another trick after this, but um, two landing areas, in other words, a place to put her jewelry to drop off her watch, um, you know, or she could use them for whatever she wanted to, but um, lots of times people want to leave this open and do something decorative there. Okay, so um, that's where I came up with the shoes. We have eight drawers. We've also got a landing. We've got laundry. Okay, so none of those things were even counted in the other one, because if she would have used uh, that landing in this one, she would have really only had six spaces for folded clothes. You can see through, this person just moved in, so you can kind of see her dilemma here. She does have quite a bit of folded clothes that don't have a place that is reachable. And that's the problem with a lot of wire shelving. Everything is way too high, so you can't reach it. Um, or it's a all a continuous shelf and it's a total mess. Okay, so um, having these, these shelves here, having these separate, this is all key. This is the closet math. This is what makes a custom closet custom. It's what makes it usable. It's what makes it so wonderful. Um, it is also what makes your clients fall in love with you and want to do business with you again and again and again because you're listening and you're giving them what they want. Okay, so that is the difference between a well thought out closet and one that's just thrown out there from a supposed closet designer. Um, and again, I don't want to talk bad about closet designers. There's many, many good, great closet designers out there. But you do have to be careful because just because somebody comes to your house or, um, you know, goes on an appointment doesn't mean they're a, a really good closet designer. One other thing that I wanted to show you guys is something else that you could do here. So depending on who my client hires to do this project, um, if you've got uh, somebody that knows what they're doing, you can take this apart here and you can build this in a way so that you've got one big open space here. So one big open landing. All right, so that is an option if you've got the capability, um, if, you're, if your installer knows how to do that kind of thing. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a couple pictures. Let's see here. Um, I gotta get, okay. So here is that wonderful pullout laundry that I was telling you about. This one happens to be in a cabinet Maybe that's not the best one to show because it is in a cabinet. Here's another one that's not in a cabinet, okay? So you can see how this pulls out from the section. It's got two really nice big bags, super convenient to use. And then this one happens to have shoe shelves above it again, okay? The other thing I wanted to show you guys was the difference between a landing that's continuous and one that is separated. So here is a landing that's continuous. So you can see here, we've got two stacks of drawers and we've got a continuous landing. 
you're going to either need to be a really good DIYer or you're going to have to be working with a company that knows how to do this. And again, you can't you can't do certain things uh, because, you know, you've got to know what you're doing. This creates a lot of stress on this point. Um, so it's, it's not, you know, there are actually some cleats and things back here to help support this. There's a little bit more that goes into it. But I do have a lot of clients that also like to keep it separate. And so not everybody wants a continuous landing. So here's another one where they did want it separate. And there's another laundry system there. They also... Um, you know, we're just going to use this as a place for folded clothes and not a landing. But a lot of my clients like to have a little bit of space there so that they can make it, you know, um, a little bit prettier. And I'll show you one where somebody's kind of got it decked out. Ah, it's in the very top. Um, well, here's one that's separated, but she's still using this side as a landing. And here's one a little bit fancier where she really, you know, decorated it. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, the, the next comparison that I wanna do, I'm thinking is potentially a comparison of what happens when you try to use a system like Ikea. A lot of people don't understand the depth of those systems and how they affect the closet. So that's my idea for my next video. But if you guys have any ideas, I would love to hear from you. Again, if you are a homeowner and just want it done, there's a link below where you can hire me to virtually design a closet for you. If you are a professional organizer, a designer, a cabinet shop, or somebody wants to learn how to install and design custom closets, there's another link below for a custom design course. All right. If you want coaching on your business, you can hit me up for that below as well. All right. That's what I've got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, can't wait to hear your comments. And uh, yeah, till next time, take care.